All right, shalom, shalom. Another holiday, another set of greetings. Uh, shalom, shalom is uh, what they tend to say uh, in Israel when they greet someone. Uh, and then uh, also on any of the celebrations, uh, we use a term that actually means happy feast day, literally, Chag Sameach. So let's all say that together, Chag Sameach. Now it's not Chag, Chag is not kosher, Chag, you gotta clear the throat. Uh, and then if you're really fancy, you stick the name of the holiday in between the Chag and the Sameach. So tonight it is Chag Purim Sameach. And we are glad to have you with us. We welcome you to Adon Alum Messianic Congregation. My name is Todd Lesser. I'm the Congregational Leader. And uh, we are uh, just trusting that the Lord will use uh, the traditions of our people, uh, particularly the humor associated with our celebration of Purim, to teach you truths as this uh, observance is based on the book of Esther. Uh, and we will be uh, helping you to understand that in a greater way tonight. How many have never been to a Purim celebration before? Okay, so for a few of you, uh, this will be the, the first time. Uh, and um, if you do it wrong, uh, we just will escort you out. It's no problem. <laughs> now, actually, Purim is a time when um, we, we use levity and... Uh, um, we relax some of the rules uh, that we ordinarily have in terms of traditional Judaism uh, just because of the uh, unlikeliness of the victory, the, the um, remarkable, miraculous aspect of it. And uh, it's a reminder that we serve and believe in a miracle-working God. And so you may need a miracle tonight. And just as he was able to perform miracles uh, long ago that we will be commemorating, he can perform, still perform the miracle uh, in our lives Amen. today. Amen? Amen. All right. So uh, we are going to begin our service uh, with the lighting of the uh, holiday candle. So I'm going to call up May Galloway. Uh, to usher in the holiday with the traditional lighting of the candles followed by the traditional blessing that we say at the beginning of the holiday. We may say traditional a lot tonight because we're celebrating an observance that even though it's based on what we find in the scriptures, uh, much of the church world doesn't celebrate it, but there are many traditions in Judaism associated with our celebration. Thank you, May. And now we are going to recite the traditional prayer, thanking the Lord for the uh, miracles associated with Purim. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam, sha'asa nisim la'avotenu bayamim ha'hem bazman hazeh. Amen. And now we will recite together the English translation. Blessed art thou, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who performed miracles for our forefathers in days of old at this season. Amen. We also begin each holiday with a blessing, thanking the Lord for giving us the privilege of being able to be here to celebrate. Uh, so at this time, I will call up our cantor uh, for the evening, Fred Scott, uh, as once again, he will uh, chant the Hebrew, and then we will recite the English translation together. Amen. 
Blessed art thou, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who has kept us in life and sustained us and enabled us to reach this season. Amen. Now, uh, we would ask you to please stand for the prayer known as the Shema. This prayer is based on Deuteronomy 6, verse 4. Uh, in this prayer, as a community, we affirm the oneness, the uniqueness of our God. Yeshua referred to the first line of the Shema as the greatest commandment. We'll uh, once again chant the prayer in Hebrew and then recite the English translation. Shema Yisrael Adonai Blessed be his glorious name, whose kingdom is forever and ever. Amen. Now I would ask you to uh, join with me as we open our service in prayer. Eloheinu, Elohim Oteinu, Elohim Raham, Elohe Yitzchak, Elohe Yaakov. Our God and God of our fathers, God of Abraham, God of Isaac, and God of Jacob. Lord, we just uh, thank you for this opportunity to uh, celebrate uh, the events uh, that you that we are instructed in the scriptures to remember uh, each year, Lord, uh, your miraculous deliverance of your people. And Lord, we thank you for the deliverance that each one of us has experienced uh, through the miracle of the provision of your son as the sacrifice for our sins, uh, Lord, that enables us to have a restored relationship with the creator of the universe. Lord, we just ask you to bless this service, to help all that we do, uh, give us a greater understanding uh, of the um, impact of these events, the significance of these events, Lord, and uh, that we would just be drawn closer to you, uh, that you would um, just receive all the glory, honor, and praise. And we ask these things in our Messiah Yeshua's name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. And now I'm going to call up uh, Eli Scott uh, to uh, bring us our announcements for the week. Chag Sameach. Happy Purim and welcome to Adon Alam Messianic Congregation. If you are a first time visitor this evening, please raise your hand so that we may recognize you. If you have not yet received a visitor's packet, please keep your hand raised so we can get one to you. The packet contains brochures which tell you about our congregation and our services. You will also find a visitor's card which we would ask you to kindly fill out and place in the offering box next to the American flag after the service. Once again, we are blessed to have you this evening. Esther 9 verse 22 says that Purim is a time of giving portions to one another and gifts to the poor. Tonight we are providing an offering box for the, for the Ukraine Messianic congregations as our Purim offering. Next month, on Friday, April 7th, at 6.30 p.m., we'll be have, we will be having our community Passover Seder at the Embassy Suites Hotel. Cost is $60 per person with a $5 discount if paid by March 15th. We will also have a member's rebate given at s some later point. Flyers are on the mat materials table with details as to how to sign up and pay. We pray the Lord's blessings upon you and hope you will feel his sweet spirit as you worship with us this evening. Once again, Chag Sameach. Thank you, Eli. No. El Eliyahu. No, Eliyahu. Groggers or noisemakers, if you did not bring one of your own. Anybody bring one? I didn't think so. Okay. Not to worry. We uh, would be happy to let you borrow one of ours to help you bull, uh, bull help you boo the villain. Please boo the villain for only a second or two so we don't miss any of our story. All right, everybody get a grogger. I'll take that as a yes. Thank you. 
by the way, is traditional to come dressed as one of the characters, and I have it on good authority that Mordecai uh, always wore a blue shirt, so um, I'm dressed as Mordecai. Uh, in searching the archives, we found some footage of various newscasts from the Persian Empire during the time of Queen Esther. We think they will shed some light on the story, so we thought we would share them with you this evening. So uh, sit back and enjoy as we uh, show the video. Good evening and welcome to the AOMC Evening News, coming to you live from the kingdom of Akash stretching from India to Ethiopia. I'm Cole Cutts. And I'm Candy Barr. In our top story this evening, the queen has been dethroned. King Akash has stripped Queen Vashti of her crown and royal title. Our reporter, Paige Turner, is on the scene at the palace in Shushan with details. Paige? I'm standing outside the palace where sources have told me that Queen Vashti was dethroned after she refused to appear before the king when she was summoned. It is not yet clear whether the summons was a proper one or whether the queen's response was an appropriate one. The series of events that led to this decision started a little over six months ago when the king decided to give an elaborate 180 day banquet for all of the princes and nobles of Persia and Media. This was followed by a seven-day banquet of drinking and revelry for everyone in Shushan. Queen Vashti hosted a week-long banquet for the women at the same time. Anonymous sources tell AOMC News that the king appeared to be a bit inebriated when he summoned Queen Vashti to come and show off her beauty. She responded with a flat-out refusal and some talk of an Equal Rights Amendment which got her banished from the King's presence. I'll keep you posted as this story unfolds. Back to you in the studio. Thanks, Paige. The King's advisors have announced a search throughout the Kingdom for all the beautiful virgins to compete in a contest to replace Vashti as Queen of Media and Persia. So if you're a beautiful young woman and you want to become queen, or even if you don't, expect the Shushan Secret Service at your door soon. That's the story we have so far. We'll be back with you with all the news tomorrow night. And now, a word from one of our sponsors. Howdy folks, I'm Colonel Haboob Sandstorm and I'd like to tell you a little bit about my Persian fried pigeon. We cook Persian fried pigeon my way. We always use the highest quality plump young pigeons, always fresh, never frozen. It's cut into pieces and dipped into flour, seasoned with my 11 secret herbs and spices. Get a bucket of 10 pigeon pieces, plus eggplant, lentils, and non bread, all for only two silver coins. Nobody makes pigeon like we do. I am sure that you're going to think it is finger licking good.
Welcome to the AOMC Evening News, where our motto is, when the news breaks, we fix it. I'm Cole Cutts. And I'm Candy Barr. Of course, the big news tonight is the coronation of a new queen. She has a beautiful face and figure, plus she beat out hundreds of others in a complex year-long competition to become the new queen of media, Persia. Her name is Esther. Our sports and leisure reporter, Gymnasium, has the details on that, as well as the latest in sports. Jim? Thanks, Cole. In the Shushanopolis 500, Mimikon Andretti drove the Persian fried chicken Palace Depot dromedary to an impressive victory over the favorite Tarshish Earnhardt on the Kingdom Express, Best Barter Camel, and a field of 27 others. And don't forget that the festivities will soon be underway, leading up to next week's rivalry showdown between the University of Persia Gamecocks and the Ethiopia Tigers. But today, everyone's attention is on the coronation of the new queen, and the competition to be chosen has been fierce. The process started a year ago when all of the attractive, eligible young women in the kingdom were brought to the palace house of the women, they were then put through a year of beauty treatments, culminating with an interview with the king. Everyone seems pleased with his choice because Queen Esther is not only beautiful, but we are told she is liked by everyone who meets her. Esther's banquet is about to begin, so I'll send it back to you in the studio. In an unrelated story, a Jewish man named Mordecai has been seen walking back and forth at the gate of the palace every day for a year. There's plenty of speculation as to what his interests might be, but no one seems to know for sure. In breaking news, two of the King's guards, Big Ten and Teresh, have been arrested and sentenced to hanging after it was discovered that they planned to assassinate the King. The Persian Bureau of Investigation credits this same Mordecai mm -hmm. with tipping them off to the plot. Well, that's our news for tonight, and now a public service announcement. One of the most common, tempting, and deadly distractions for teen drivers is scrolls. Reading or writing a scroll while driving a camel, horse, or other animal makes you 20 times more likely to have an accident. 78% of teen girls and 57% of teen boys admit to scrolling while driving. You, as a parent, should talk to your teen about not scrolling and driving. You should also set a good example by putting away your scrolls while in control of an animal. Scrolling and driving is a deadly combination. Get your family and friends to agree to put away their scrolls while driving. Take the pledge. Save lives. Good evening and welcome to the AOMC Evening News. I'm Candy Barr. And I'm Cole Cuts. In the news tonight, Haman, ooh, the son of Hamadatha the Agagite, has been promoted by the king to the rank of prime minister. Haman ooh, says that he plans to enrich uranium for peaceful purposes only. He says he has no plans whatsoever to build weapons and nuke Israel. The king has commanded that everyone bow to Haman. Boo. One of the Jewish men, Mordecai, has refused to bow to him, which makes him furious. Servants of the king tell us, off record of course, that Haman... Boo has decided to simply get rid of Mordecai. Our investigative reporter, Robin Banks, has more on this. Robin? Thanks, Cole. AOMC News has learned that when Haman Boo. discovered that Mordecai was Jewish, he determined to extend his extermination plan to include all the Jews. He cast lots, or poor, 
to decide what day to carry out his plan. He even offered the king 10,000 talents of silver for the right to destroy the Jews. Sources close to the king say that he refused the money but gave Haman Boo. his signet reign and free reign to make laws as he pleased. The first executive order written by Haman Boo. was a command to annihilate the Jews and seize all their possessions. As you can imagine, this has caused chaos and confusion throughout the city. Now back to you. Thanks, Robin. In light of this and the recent assassination plot against the king, there's a growing faction among the king's advisors who are calling for new sword co control laws. This has been countered by the leader of the National Sword Association, who says that his group will fight for the right of the people to bear swords. Like most of the Jewish people, Mordecai, the man who has been seen daily at the king's gate, has torn his clothes and has been sitting in sackcloth and ashes, fasting and wailing bitterly. Feeling that sackcloth was not appropriate attire to sit at the king's gate, Queen Esther responded to this by sending her servant Hatak to Mordecai with a coupon for Joseph A. Banks mm. so that he could buy one robe and get another robe, two cloaks, two headdresses, and a belt for free. Mordecai refused her offer and sent her a copy of the executive order regarding the destruction of the Jews. For more on this story, we'll go to our palace correspondent, just in time, Justin. An unidentified source at the palace told AOMC News that a series of messages has been passed between Queen Esther and the Jew Mordecai through her servant, Hatach. In one message, Mordecai appeared to Je Esther to go to the king and beg him to save the Jewish people. Esther informed Mordecai that such an act would be by law means certain death. If the king did not want to see her. This was followed by an ominous message from Mordecai suggesting that Queen Esther, who was also in danger in living in the palace surrounded by the Secret Service, and that this was perhaps the reason that she was chosen to be the queen for such a time as this. He also expressed his conviction that if she refused, she would not survive, but the Jews would be saved by some other means. My source tells me that this was followed by Queen Esther telling Mordecai to gather all the Jews in Shushan. Shushan and fast for food and drink for three days, and that she and her maidens would do the same. Afterwards, she said she would go to the king. She entered a communication with him with a curious statement, quote, and if I perish, I perish, end quote. It seems that there's much uncertainty in Shushan these days. Back to you, Cole and Candy. Thanks, Justin. Well, that wraps up the news this evening. This afternoon, I had a chance to sit down and talk with Zeresh, the wife of the new prime minister. Be sure to join me tonight at eight for my exclusive interview. Here are some excerpts from that conversation. Zeresh, your life must be quite chaotic since you found out that your husband has been given such a big promotion. How did you react when you suddenly found yourself in the role of the wife of prime minister? The king has ordered that everyone bow to your husband, yet there are those who refuse to obey this order. Does all of this controversy walking down the street with Haman Boo. make things a bit awkward? Your husband has been described as an anti-Semite. He has allegedly offered the king 10,000 talents of silver to be allowed to annihilate all the Jews in the kingdom. Do you share in his anti-Semitic views? Good evening and welcome to the AOMC Evening News. I'm Cole Cutts. And I'm Candy Barr. In our top story, Queen Esther risked her life today after three days of fasting by going in to see the king without being summoned. Thankfully, the king was glad to see her and extended his golden scepter so that she could approach him without being killed. 
We are told he offered her half the kingdom, but she settled for having the king and Haman Boo. join her for a banquet, for she simply asked them to join her for a second banquet tomorrow. Haman Boo. left the banquet feeling pretty special about his wealth, status, and position until he encountered Mordecai, whose continued refusal to bow to Haman Boo. caused his happiness to turn into fury. Haman Boo. went home and on the advice of Zeresh's wife and a number of his friends decided to have a 75-foot gallows built and asked for the king for his permission to hang Mordecai on it. This would allow him to enjoy the banquet with the king and the queen and restore his happiness. We'll be back tomorrow with all the news. And now, a word from one of our sponsors. Are you looking for a licensed, bonded, and insured contractor who can remodel an old gallows or build you a new one? Do you want a reputable company who takes pride in doing a job right? Someone you can count on to be on time and get the job done? Well, look no further than Ernest and Julio Gallows Builders. We can build from your plans or you can choose one of our popular designs. We build gallows or any other type of structure, simple or elaborate, residential or commercial. No job is too large or too small. Our gallows are sturdy and our nooses are strong. Remember, Ernest and Julio Gallows Builders, we'll leave you hanging. Mrs. Cut said I look like a big Heinz 50-second pickle in the green last night, so I wore blue to it. Good evening, and welcome to the AOMC Evening News. I'm Candy Barr. And I'm Cole Cuts. In the news, a special parade and other special honors in Sushan today. Our weather report, April showers is on vacation, so May Flowers is here with the weather and some details on this story. May? Well, the weather throughout the kingdom is the same as always, partly cloudy, partly sunny, cold in the mountains, hot in the desert, with occasional sandstorms, and always bad for my hair. But it was a beautiful day for a parade in Sushan today, and that's just what we had. Prime Minister Haman Boo. was leading Mordecai throughout the streets of Sushan on one of the king's horses, shouting, This is what is done for the man the king delights to honor. Mordecai was wearing one of the king's robes and had a royal crown on his head. The king's press secretary announced this morning that the king was ill last night. There was no further information as to the nature of his illness, just that he had a sleepless night. During the night, the king called for a servant to read the chronicles, the record of his reign, to him as a form of sleep therapy. On hearing the account of how Mordecai had saved his life by reporting the assassination plot, the king was surprised to discover that Mordecai had never been rewarded. Another source in the palace told us off the record that Haman Boo. came Boo. in to ask the king's permission to hang Mordecai on the gallows he had built. The king took that opportunity to ask Haman's opinion Boo. on how to honor someone. It is rumored that Haman Boo. thought he was the one to be honored, so he suggested a grand parade, but he ended up putting on a parade with Mordecai as the honoree. After the parade, we are told that Haman Boo. was escorted to the second banquet with Queen Esther and the king. Back to you in the studio. Well, it's been quite a day for honorees in Shushan. Indeed it has. And that's the news for this evening. We'll leave you with a word from one of our sponsors. Imagine being run over by a reckless donkey. Imagine being injured by a runaway horse or camel. Imagine being laid up for a while and not able to work. I was in just such an accident. I had a huge bill for herbs, plaster, and doctors, and the other drivers refused to pay. It wasn't my fault. I didn't cause the accident. 
I call Dewey, Cheatham, and Howe, and they got me the coinage I deserved, and they see to it that the other drivers pay for your fair amount so you can relax and get well. Imagine that. It just was that easy at Dewey's, Cheatham, and Howe. They're looking out for you. Call 1-800-MY-MONEY today for a free case review. It won't cost you a thing. So does this floral pattern make me look fat? Good evening and welcome to the AOMC Evening News. I'm Cole Cuts. And I'm Candy Barr. In a shocking turn of events that rocked the government today, Prime Minister Heyman Boo. was hanged. Queen Esther revealed that she was Jewish and Mordecai was named as the new Prime Minister. However, the shock quickly turned to rejoicing. Now, standing at the palace with more on the story is our reporter at large, Jay Walker. Jay. Thanks, Cole. As you know, the Prime Minister joined the King and Queen for a second banquet, where it is rumored that the King offered Queen Esther up to half the kingdom. My sources tell me that she asked that she and her people, the Jewish people, be spared from death. When the king asked who was trying to kill her, she pointed to Haman <laughs> and exposed his evil plot. At that point, we are told that the king stormed out of the room, and when he returned, Haman <laughs> was falling into the queen, begging for his life. The king was furious at what he saw as an attempt to assault on his wife. Arbona, one of the king's servants, pointed out that Haman Boo. had a 75-foot gallows built so that he could hang Mordecai, who had saved the king's life. The king then ordered that Haman Boo. be hung on his own gallows. The king's press secretary announced this morning that Mordecai, who happened to be Queen Esther's cousin and foster father, has been named as the new prime minister and given the signet ring which was taken from Haman. Boo. He also confirmed that Queen Esther is Jewish and that her real name is Hadassah. The king gave Haman Boo. a state to Queen Esther and she turned it over to Mordecai. That's the story from here. Back to you. As his first act of prime minister, Mordecai issued an executive order in every language and in every province that the Jewish people would be able to arm and defend themselves against their enemies on the 13th of Adar. When the order was published, the Jewish people had a feast and a holiday to celebrate. Well, today has been an exciting day for news. <laughs> we'll keep you updated as events continue to unfold. And now, a word from one of our sponsors. Do I have a deal for you? While I shop all over the country, it's time to save at Hammett's Swindles Camelot. Right now, zero down delivers on all new mammals and all pre-owned animals are priced to move. If you're in the market for a domedary, camel, or donkey, there's never been a better time to save. We have a huge inventory with tremendous savings. If you're looking for a Hemi, a tow package, or a luxury model, you've come to the right place. We'll even buy your old mammal, no matter what its condition. We have slashed prices for unbelievable deals. So come on down the hammock, Swindles Camelot. We will not be undersold. Now, 
You say you're not satisfied? You want more for your money? Tell you what I'm going to do. Anybody that takes delivery in the next week gets a $25 credit card that's good at Shlomo's Pizzeria. You, I was wearing food today, you big flummox. Good evening, and welcome to the AOMC Evening News. I'm Candy Barr. And I'm Cole Cutts. Our top story tonight, 500 dead in the capital of Sushan, and 75,000 dead in the rest of the kingdom. Also, the 10 sons of Haman mm. were hanged. Our judicial reporter, Lily Pond, has more on the story. Lily? The statue passed by former Prime Minister Haman Boo. provided for the annihilation of the Jews today. As you know, the laws of the Medes and the Persians cannot be changed. However, the edict written by Prime Minister Mordecai allowed for the Jews to defend themselves. The 10 sons of Haman Ooh. were hanged at the request of Queen Esther. Also, the Queen's request, the Jews in Shoshane were given an extension of Mordecai's edict for tomorrow. Mordecai's approval rating is high and getting higher every day. He has now declared that the 14th day of Adar should be a day of feasting and gladness and sending gifts to the poor each year as a reminder to subsequent generations that they overcome their enemies on this day. The command of Queen Esther established this holiday of Purim. That's it for here. Back to you in the studio. Thanks, Lily. And that's our news for this evening. From AOMC Evening News, I'm Cole Cutts. And I'm Candy Barr. Good night and have a pleasant tomorrow. A basketball tournament begins, which gets it, its nickname from the month in which it takes place. It's called March Madness. Many people fill out a bracket of the expected results for 68 teams, predicting who the ultimate winner of the NCAA basketball tournament will be. Anybody ever filled out a bracket before? Okay, so you know what I'm talking about. Last year, for only the second time, a 15th seed one of the least likely teams defeated a number two seed. And only one time in the tourna tournament's history has a 16th seed beaten a one seed. This is called a bracket buster. 
as most who have filled out their brackets already have someone they thought would win most, if not all, of their games now out. And you're wrong on every game that you thought they would win. Probably the most well-known sports upset of all time is the 1984 USA hockey team, uh, composed only of amateur players defeating the Soviet Union's team, which was composed of Army professionals masquerading as our amateur hockey players. Now, I mention these upsets uh, not to give you a sports update, but because Purim is a time when we celebrate a victory that make these sports upsets look like child's play. The victory of the Jews over their adversary Haman at Purim could uh, be described as the biggest bracket buster of all time. Yet many Jews are unaware of these events even though they are recounted in their Bibles in the book of Esther. Another unusual aspect about the book of Esther is that the Lord's name is not mentioned in the book. But as we learn more and more about these events, there can be little doubt that the Lord was very much a part of this improbable victory. Many believers do not think that these events from long ago could be something we can relate to in modern times. After all, how can we expect people today to be able to relate to the idea of a maniacal leader in Iran who seeks to wipe out the Jewish people? There are other connections as well. The first Gulf War ended on Purim in 1991. And in 2003, President Bush issued an ultimatum to Saddam Hussein on Purim that he must step down. And when he refused, the war began two days later. And towards the end of this teaching, I will mention another recent historical connection to the events of Purim. The Jewish people call this holiday Purim, or Purim, uh, because of the Hebrew word for Lot, poor, because the villain used Lot's Purim to determine that the Jews were to be wiped out on the 13th day of the 12th month, which is the month of Adar. But God had other plans. A young Jewish girl would be the heroine of our story. In Esther 2 verse 7, she's called by her Hebrew name Hadassah, but she is called by her Persian name, Esther, throughout the rest of the story. Why do we observe Purim today? Here's what Esther 9.28 says about observing Purim. And that these days should be remembered and kept throughout every generation, every family, every province, and every city. And that these days of Purim should not fail from among the Jews, nor the memorial of them perish from their seed. Now, does anyone know the Hebrew word for scroll? Well, we have it up on the... It's Megillah. And here's a picture of a Megillah. Everybody remember the cartoon gorilla named Megillah? Uh, no, he, here's what a Megillah of the scroll of Esther might look like. And we read the Megillah of Esther at Purim. According to Esther 9, verse 22, the Jewish people are instructed to send portions to one another and gifts to the poor at this time. Today, most of the gift giving has been moved to Hanukkah to compete with Christmas. Here's a picture of what some Jewish people call a Hanukkah bush. At one time, it would have been more accurate to call it a Purim bush. That's actually a uh, tree that we had the first year we were married and it has a, uh, this is back in 1980, um, and we were uh, trying to figure out how to do Messianic Judaism. And so we had a, a tree, and then there's a six-pointed star with a blue light uh, at the top. That was the last year for our Purim bush, by the way. Um, <clears throat> many Jewish people still give gifts to the poor at Purim, and as we've already mentioned, uh, we're providing the offering box in the fellowship area uh, for giving to Messianic congregations in Ukraine. Uh, and uh, we would encourage you to seek the Lord about participating uh, in this offering. And if he leads you to do so, you can write Purim uh, in the memo of a check or on the outside of an envelope if you're giving cash and want a receipt. Uh, put it in the offering box in the fellowship area and uh, we will see that 
Uh, these funds get to our Messianic Jewish brethren in Ukraine. Uh, I just got word that they um, delivered uh, three generators to uh, some of the congregations in Ukraine, and there's actually pictures of I should have brought them. I'll, I'll post them next week of these Messianic congregations, and they're uh, posing with this you know, small generator in front of them that enables them uh, to generate power uh, because they're struggling uh, in so many ways being in a war zone. It's also traditional at Purim to tell the events of the Book of Esther, often, often in a humorous way, through a uh, Purim play called a Purim Spiel. Uh, also, uh, humorous skits are often performed, similar to what we try to do in our No Talent show. <clears throat> Jewish humor is often based on our ability to laugh in the face of tragedy because we know that we will continue to survive as God's people no matter how bleak things may look, no matter how cruel the persecution we are facing. Today, this holiday has become a time, as I mentioned earlier, particularly in Israel, of dressing up in costumes and wearing masks. Another Purim tradition is to have a carnival to raise money for charity. The Jewish people were told in Deuteronomy 25, verses 17 through 19, that they were to blot out all memory of Amalek from under heaven, because Amalek lay in wait for the people as they were on their way to Sinai to receive the Torah. How is this connected to Purim, you might be wondering. The rabbis tell us that the villain of Purim is thought to be a descendant of Amalek, because in Esther 3.1, his father is described as an Agagite. Agag, or Agag, is how we say it in the southern Israel, uh, was a king of the Amalekites who was eventually killed by King Shaul, King Saul. Therefore, it is traditional that whenever the name of Haman Whoa. is mentioned during the telling of the story, we drown out the name with booing and using noisemakers or groggers. Also, lighthearted songs are sung that help us remember the story, uh, as we will do in just a moment. As with most Jewish holidays, there's a food that is eaten primarily at this time. It's called chumantashen, uh, which is a three-cornered cookie with a fruit filling in the middle. Chumantashen is a Yiddish word that literally means Haman's pockets. The pastry is shaped like the three-cornered hat that Haman traditionally wears. Don't boo Chumantashen until you've tried that. <laughs> Throughout the book of Esther, we find a number of instances of duplication. For example, there are two reports of Esther's hidden identity. In Esther 2, verse 10, and again in verse, uh, chapter 2, verse 20, we are told that Esther has kept her identity as a Jewish girl hidden. Even in Esther's most famous line, there is repetition, right? If I perish, I perish. We also find in Esther 9, verses 12 and 13, that Esther repeats her request to have Haman's ten sons hanged. Here's a slide that shows the listing of the names of Haman's ten sons in the scroll of Esther, from Esther 9, verses 7 through 9, the place where you have uh, the big spacing. Uh, when we look at the Hebrew, we find that three letters are written smaller, uh, as we can show on the next slide, and one letter is written larger than the other letters. One of the interpretations, according to the rabbis, is that these letters could represent the year 5707 on the Hebrew calendar, which would have started in September 1946. Now, you might be interested to know that October 1st, 1946, was the 21st of Tishrei in the year 5707 on the Hebrew calendar. And the 21st of Tishrei, the 21st day of the seventh month, is the day according to Jewish tradition when the judgments for the coming year are sealed. And on this day in 1946, 11 Nazi war criminals were scheduled to be hanged following the Nuremberg war trials. But several hours before he was to be hanged, Hermann Goering committed suicide in his cell. Therefore, 10 men were hanged that day, as recorded in this October 1946 edition of Newsweek magazine. 
It says, only Julius Stryker went without dignity. He had to be pushed across the floor, wild-eyed and screaming, Heil Hitler. Mounting the steps, he cried out, and now I go to God. He stared at the witnesses facing the gallows and shouted, Purim Fest, 1946. A couple of years ago, I came across a website that provides even more evidence that the Nazi executions in 1946 could be a fulfillment of Esther's request. This information is based on something called ELS, Equidistancing Letters, Equidistant Letter Sequencing, of which I was initially skeptical, but I have shown several examples in the past that are way too complicated to have come about by purely random chance. Here's the Hebrew of Esther 8.3 to 9.27, arranged with 216 letters per line. 216 is 6 cubed. White on red gives the date of the 21st of Tishrei. Um, oh yeah, white letters on a red background. Um, the Hebrew date of the Nazi executions. 5707 is found in dark blue lettering on light blue. White on black lettering gives you Nazi and yellow letters on green background uh, gives you the Hebrew word for hanged. Because the trials were conducted by a military tribunal, the death sentence should have been by firing squad. Goering, in fact, requested it. But it was decided to not treat them as soldiers and execute them by hanging. Now remember, the Book of Esther was written thousands of years ago, and yet it has these clues uh, that we find in the um, looking at letters with certain spacing uh, either uh, horizontal, vertical, or on the diagonal. Now remember, the Jewish people had just come out of the Holocaust uh, in 1946. And the question many of them were asking was, where was God? So these events could have been a sign to the Jewish people that the hand of God could still be seen working even after the horrors of the Holocaust. And less than two years later, on May 14, 1948, on the English calendar, the nation of Israel is reborn, fulfilling numerous prophecies that the Lord would reestablish the Jewish people again in the land of promise. Now, as we mentioned earlier, uh, I have a slide that has the traditional greeting, Chag Purim Sameach, Happy Feast of Purim. Now I'm going to call our uh, cantor, Fred Scott, back up to say the blessings over the fruit of the vine and the bread, known as the Kiddush and the Hamotzi, as we uh, ask the Lord to bless this service, and we thank him for his provision, uh, traditionally at the end of each of our services. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe who creates the fruit of the vine. Amen. 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 We say Lachayim, which means to life. A traditional Jewish toast and also a reminder that the Lord says that he sets before us life and death, blessing and curse, and tells us to choose life. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who brings forth bread and all manner of food from the earth. Amen. And now we will conclude this portion of our service as we are going to have our net no talent show immediately afterwards. Um, but uh, right now we would ask you to please stand as we are going to pronounce a blessing found in Numbers chapter 6. These are actually the Lord's words of blessing to be pronounced over his people. So we encourage you to stand and receive the blessing of the Lord. Ya 
V'yasem lecha shalom. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and may he grant unto you his peace. Amen. Thank you all for coming.